Let's take a look at a couple really cool techniques to scale images and resize them without stretching them. I've opened up a picture here in Photoshop just by going up to open or dragging an image in. I'm gonna unlock the layer down here. So we just have this picture on a single layer. Now if I wanted to make this a square photo for instance, what I would do is go up to image, down to canvas size. You can also use the crop tool. And I would just take the height and paste it into the width here, make those identical and hit OK. So now we have this square canvas size. My image is still here in the center. Obviously it's the height of this. I could zoom out, Command or Control minus, and then press Command or Control T to do a free transform. If you start to scale one of these corners, you'll notice the image stretches. So I could hold Shift or hold Shift and Alt or Option to scale it up proportionally from the center. Cool, so I fit this to my square size without stretching it, but that's not what I'm here to show you. I just wanna make sure you know how to scale images without stretching them proportionally. What if I wanted this full person in this image without scaling it up like this, right? I'm missing part of the person now. I don't wanna scale her up. I just want the background to fill in on the sides. There's an awesome feature now in Photoshop called Content Aware Scale as well as Content Aware Fill. We'll look at the difference between both. So what I can do is make a quick selection of my subject here. I could click on the object selection tool. If it's not a person, I could just draw around whatever my object is. It could be a tree, it could be a car, it could be anything that is subject matter. With the object selection tool, Photoshop will see what you drew around and it'll make a selection on that subject. If it is a person, one of the things you might be able to do is go up to select subject. And it's gonna take a look at your image and then select the person out of it. So you could do either one of these to get to a selection that's roughly what you want not to stretch or scale or anything. You want to retain the quality of the person here. So once we have a selection about around it, it does not have to be perfect at all. Now you can go up to select down to save selection. So we're gonna save this selection in this new document here and I'm just gonna label it person. We'll hit okay, command or control D to deselect. Now what we can do is with this layer selected, whichever layer you're scaling and you want to fill in the background, go up to edit down to content aware scale. Now the other thing we wanna do up here in the options is protect our person, right? We're gonna protect that selection. So Photoshop is gonna take a look at this. It's gonna scale everything but the person. So what we can do is grab an edge and start to bring it out. We can hold option on a Mac or Alt on Windows. And look at this, as we stretch this image, our person is remaining the same inside of it. So we could stretch that out, and now Photoshop has kept the person protected and created background outside of them. So I didn't have to scale this up and make it bigger at all to fit the person inside of the square canvas. So another thing we can do here, depending on the background, is use Content Aware Fill. So I'm gonna make a selection just with my marquee tool. You can use the lasso tool, you can use any of these. I'm gonna create a selection of the empty space on either side of my image. So we've got this, I'm gonna hold shift now, you'll see a plus icon over the cursor, and we'll add in this left side as well. So we have a selection of the left and the right of this image. We can then, with this layer selected, go up to edit, down to content aware fill. So this one's really interesting. What it's gonna do, and your thumbnail won't be this big, it'll be like this over on the side, but you can pull it up a little bit. Photoshop is taking a look at all the green overlaid area, and it's trying to fill in the edges over here. Obviously, it hasn't done a perfect job. We'll tweak some settings here in a second. One of the things you can do is tell Photoshop what to look at and what not to look at. So you'll see that it starts on this cursor here with a little minus icon. If you hold Option or Alt, it goes to a plus. So with the plus, you can add in area. The minus, you can remove area. First thing I'm gonna do is just remove this area around the person. I wanna make sure that Photoshop's not looking at the person at all when it's trying to fill in the background, right? We don't need any additional pixels from our subject. We just want the, it to look at the background and make adjustments based on that. Now, the next thing we can do over on this side is kinda of look at the sampling area. Okay, we don't need to make any tweaks there. Sampling area options, well, we're gonna go ahead and leave this on what it's on. Fill settings, this is where we might change a few things. We might look at color adaptation. 
We could switch this to any one of these settings to see how it tweaks. You see it's already made some different adjustments when I switch that to very high. Rotation adaption, same thing. Now I found that this maybe doesn't work the best, so we're not gonna touch that. You can also look at scale, and you kind of see as Photoshop crunches this image and, and gives you a little preview what that does, and you can also look at mirror. I think we might use mirror in this case because it's gonna be helpful, especially down here at the bottom. But we'll kind of see what Photoshop gives us with the settings you have, how it's gonna make adjustments here. Look, Mir added in these bricks over here, kind of made this wonky over here, so we might undo that. Now this might change depending on the image that you're using. Adjust and tweak any of these settings to get the background you want. Now the background's probably not gonna be absolutely perfect and we're gonna make some edits to it after we use this content aware fill. The other thing is it's going to output to a new layer. So we'll be able to tweak these two layers separately or we can even merge them together to then make adjustments on that combined layer. So after tweaking these settings a little bit, I've landed on one that I think is pretty good and won't require too much additional work. We're gonna go ahead and hit OK, and Photoshop will fill in all those new pixels on this new layer on top. You can see I can even hide it and show this old image and the new layer here. So if you want to, you don't have to at this point, but what I'm gonna do is merge these two together. I want this to be one image, and I'm gonna make some adjustments on that one image. So we can right click on this and click Merge Layers. Now we've got these two combined into one image now. So what did it do? Well, it added a lot of duplicate things around here, and those are really easy to take care of. In fact, if you just go over here into the Spot Healing Brush tool, we can actually remove some of these very quickly. So this is kind of like a brush. You even have brush options. We could bring the hardness down, we can bring the size up, and we can go around and take a look at these different little spots here. Maybe I feel like there's too many of these. We can actually remove them super easy just by painting over them. Photoshop is just gonna kind of crunch the numbers here and remove them really quickly. Even these sections here, any little blemish that you feel like is a little too much or maybe it just kind of gives away the fact that this has been duplicated out, you can just paint over here. I think Photoshop's probably added too many of these little notches in the background over here so we can start to remove some of them as well. Now another tool that we can use really quick is the healing brush tool. So if you've got some things that are along the edge here, like this, the spot healing brush is really good at taking care of these sort of random elements that are in the middle of a lot of similar space. But when you have things along the edge of a very contrasty area, I would go with the healing brush tool. We can press option or alt to kind of sample an area and then bring it over here and start to paint. And the cool thing about the healing brush tool is it'll take the sample pixels, like what it looks like, but then it will sort of merge and blend them into the area that you're painting, which is really nice and, and handy and helpful because you don't have to, you know, with the clone stamp tool, if anybody remembers that tool, this one will copy exactly what you see, but a lot of times colors won't match. The healing brush tool is really nice because it'll actually take colors and pixels from one area and make it look like it should fit into another area. So we can just kind of paint along this until we get all of this sort of blended and merged together. Once you get that, we could move over to here. I've got a couple different areas over here to maybe combine and make sure that it doesn't look like anything has been duplicated too much. All right, so there you have it. This is the method where we do a content aware fill, and then underneath it, you'll see the method where we did the content aware scale. The difference between the two, the fill actually created more information in the image based on what is already in the image. The scale scaled the background behind our subject, but not our subject itself. What did that do? Well, it kind of stretched the pixels out. You can kind of tell that these pixels are skewed out a little bit. So if it doesn't quite work in that case, then maybe content aware fill is more an option for you. Since that pulled those back together, it doesn't look so stretched out behind her. You might be able to get away with it if you're not scaling too much, but the content aware fill sometimes doesn't work depending on if there's like a very specific object in the background, like half of a car or something that would clearly not be able to be repeated. But these are two options to scale images without scaling the subject matter or skewing the subject matter within the image.